Now then YouTube, I am the Tough Man and welcome back to episode 2 of the co-op kind of let's play versus, I don't know what you want to call it, multiplayer game of uh, Football Manager 2013. Myself and my cousin are both involved in this game. He is Tottenham, I am Liverpool. You can see his version of events on his channel, which is going to be linked in the description below. My version of events you are already watching, so... Now then, um, okay, we, we're going to have a look at the transfers that he's been making. We're going to try to stay away from this transfer centre because obviously that's got the deals that he's working on. And I don't particularly, although I've seen it, I don't particularly want to uh, to see what he's up to in terms of the transfer centre. I want to know what he's done, but I don't want to know what he's going to do, if you know what I mean. It just spoils it kind of a lot. So... We're looking at his history here. He's got £9 million pound offer in. Uh, well, he's, I had that accepted. He's got that transfer done now. £9 million pounds for Anderson. Now, he has actually got 20 odd million on his transfer budget. Whereas I had none. I had to uh, deal with uh, asking, scrounging for more wage budget and then putting the wage into the transfer. And yeah, I'm just I'm not getting as many people as I would like to. So he's got the nine million pounds uh, for paid for Anderson. He's actually worth eleven. So to get him for nine million, it's not bad. It's not bad, not not bad deal at all. In the centre of midfield there, and he's got Harry Kane that's gone out on uh, on loan. So in hours we've got some news. The offer has been accepted. I said last episode that that would probably most likely be accepted. This has been accepted. I can now go and offer him a contract. Um, he's gonna be. He is gonna be a backup. I hate to say. So what's the minimum amount of wages there? That's, mm. Uh, we, I want to try to lock that wage in. There is no way I can give him what he wants. Wait, let's just see. Let's just see. So the loyalty bonus has actually gone up to 1.1 million because of that. Um, I can't do that. Ah, look. See, I can't do that either, so I'm going to lock that in. My client feels these are acceptable. So, after reaching an international appearance, he looks like he plays for Denmark. Okay, so if he, if he plays for Denmark, I don't think he's... Still, 26,500. I, mm, I don't know, actually. Twenty-two? Can I suggest them terms? No. I knew he was going to do that when he said we agreed the terms, so... But suggest those terms. They're okay. Backup player. I've got my first signing. Um, his appearance fee, a bit too much for my liking. But still, we've got our backup left back, and that is exactly what I wanted. Let's finalise that deal. And uh, back up out of that. I'll just press continue. And there we have it. 1.9 million for my first guy. Um... I'm pushing the ball out. <laughs> As I predicted in the last episode, it will be the test that we're playing in the Euro Cup third qualifying round. That is going to be a test, guys. Um, we Vitesse will be drawn as the home team. So the first leg will be played at Geldrome, Gelrodrome, Gel, whatever it says there. Uh, it will be played at Vitesse. So uh, that's that. We'd still have the second leg, of course, at, uh, at our house, at our house, of course, uh, and we'll see where we go from uh, from there. But I'm really hoping that we do get through, because if we don't, then, uh, oh God, that would just be embarrassing. And there we have it. I have confirmed the deal for Jesper Julesgaard uh, with a 1.9 million rated left back. He's going to act as cover for uh, for Enrique, who didn't have any cover whatsoever. So that is a good acquisition, I think. Um, and that's brilliant. I, I'm really happy with that. Now, I'm going to have to actually go to my fixtures because I believe I may have actually messed myself up a little bit here um, with these things. I didn't realise that this qualifying thing would be right in the middle of this and that's why I didn't have any friendlies there. So the Lancaster City, I... can I stop these? I'm going to have to try to cancel these. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that one. That's fine. Uh, this one... whoops. This one... I'm going to have to try to cancel. How do I cancel these things? Don't know if I'm going to be able to. Hmm. I don't think I can actually cancel 
these fixtures. Well, certainly serves me right, that's for sure. That is annoying. Nope, it's that one I want to cancel. I'd like to cancel that one, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to. It just means that I'm going to have to play you know, my second team or something like that when it comes around. Um, Lancaster City is next, then we've got Vitesse, uh, like a week or something later. What was it? Lancaster, one, two, three, four days rest, and then that one. So there we are. That is our pre-season run, and then of course Newcastle in a friendly, bloody two days afterwards. I really should have left these blank. I couldn't. I don't know why the hell I've gone and you know uh, put in these these friendlies here. I thought I was free, but apparently not. And my pre-season friendly uh, at home to Lancaster City with pretty much my second team, Sebastian Quartez in the fourth minute puts his 1-0 up and then nothing else happened after that. 14,000 people came to watch that match, pretty pitiful, but still I bet it was a great day out for Lancaster City and a nice win nonetheless. And the signing has come through guys, Jesper Julesgaard is a Liverpool player at left back, not bad stats guys, not bad stats. The marking, eh, and uh, the tackling is not particularly bad, but uh, well not particularly great, but he does have that crossing ability, he does, uh, well I thought he had more dribbling than that. Never mind, he does have acceleration, he does have the pace there, and that is you know, key for an attacking uh, left back, so that's good. And he does have great, great stamina as well, which is also a plus. He's 23 years old, so I expect him to get better over his time at uh, Liverpool. And uh, I hope you do see him in uh, future matches. I will believe he will probably be part, be part of my pre-season friendlies that are coming up. Not the one against Vitesse, that will be, of course... Um, Jose Enrique, and my full first team, if I can get away with doing that, uh, but uh, I think he will just be part of my uh, pre-season friendlies. So guys, I got a uh, a offer from Tottenham. They were interested in buying Sebastian Quartes, and I have declared an acceptable value for the player. I said, give me five million and Gareth Bale, and you can have him. Right, uh, guys, I have received a counter offer for Sebastian Quartes of 7.5 million. Now, this is directly from Shed, of course, because he is Tottenham. 7.5 million. Let's have a look around the place. Hmm. I'm stroking my non existent beard, even though it's actually quite existent at the moment. Uh. I'll negotiate with that. Alright guys, I have a Euro Cup game as you can see, Vitesse versus Liverpool. Uh, I'm currently away from home in the first leg. Let us go to uh, here. Now I'm going to ask to pick. Now I'm then going to have a look at this and see whether or not I can shifty people around. I think that that is most definitely the better way to go around it. Um, Gerard, mm, see the the thing is, I want Coutinho in where Gerard is. So if I take uh, Gerard and put him there, if I take Henderson and then take him out for Coutinho, I think we're looking all right there. However, look at the condition of these players. Now, the uh, let me. Where has he gone? Where has he gone? Quartet. There he is. Um, he is subject of a 7.5 million bid from uh, Tottenham. I did originally say, you know, you can have him for 8.25, but then I've gone back and I've said, look. If you want him, you can have him for 7.5. It'll allow me to maybe buy somebody else in the areas that I need to, especially with that kind of money. So, Vitesse versus Liverpool. We are going to go for an instant result. Uh, the only ones that are not instant result in is the game that's going to be against my cousin, um, because that one is going to be actually live on camera. Um, and we're going to do this, much like what uh, what... I do for my Man City one. I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, go through the matches quickly, and then certain matches I'm going to set and say, look, this one is going to be a live one, and then we're going to set that one as a live one. We're going to show you the actual match, and so on and so forth. I think that's what Shed's going to be doing as well. So Vitesse versus Liverpool. Um, 
play for a draw, settle for a draw, play for the win, go for a big win, smash and grab, leave it late. Now we are away from home and this is a very, very important match. So we can play for the draw or we can settle for a draw. I'm going to settle for a draw. I'm quite alright with settling for a draw away from home. If we manage to get a draw, that's a big plus on us. So we'll see. Instant result. Vitesse versus Liverpool. You watch, they'll have grabbed it. They'll have grabbed it late, I bet you. Let's have a look. A lot of uh, games to get through. Back in a sec. Alright guys, unfortunately it was a 1-0 loss. So that's uh, that's not what we want. However, we are at home for the next match and I fully expect to really go out there and destroy them at home. If we don't do that, then slappings is definitely going to be had because if we get knocked out in the qualifying round of the Europa League, I'm not going to be happy about it. Let's put it that way. We've got five messages here. Let's have a, a read on this. The test stun reds, of course. They've made the offer of seven and a half million for Quartes. I'll take that. I've got Danny Wilson in uh, reserves that I will bring up in his place. Quartes is a big person to, to leave, and he has got a really bright future. But for the meantime, I've got to do something. I've got to get that money in. So, I'll accept that. Now, this screen I particularly like with the Football Manager Classic. This screen is really, really nice. And it is set out quite like what you would find on maybe Sky Sports or BBC News or somewhere like that. This is what I like about the Football Manager Classic. I like the streamlined effect. I like the, the, the tons and tons of details, mini details that most people seem to skip over is not there. And it really is quite streamlined. And I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. I really am. And there we have 7.5 million pound deal taking my player to uh, Shed's team. Uh, 7.5 million will allow me to put something into the transfers from an area I don't really need to keep. You know, I've got the centre backs. I know Jeremy Carragher is retiring at the end of the season, but he's still there for this season. Next season, I will get some sort of budget. Um, this season, I won't. So I've really, really got to get the monies from somewhere. This is where I've got it from. 7.5 million pound deal for Sebastian Quartes. I don't think it's a bad piece of business. It's a good piece of business for Shed. It's also a good piece of business for me in the time uh, in in the time being. In the time being. Yeah, that's the right word. That's the right way of saying it, isn't it? So yeah, 7.5 million. I don't know what kind of uh, money is going to be coming into my transfer uh, budget, but I hope it's going to be 7.5 million because that will really push me on with a couple of uh, signings. You've probably noticed this person in particular. I'm trying. I'm, I'm squeezing some. I'm squeezing more and more out of this club while I can because this guy is a ledge. So for a very very modest wage, um, which does go up. Admittedly, after five league games, it will go up to 11,000 a week, which is still not that much, to be quite honest. Um, a full, this really is a guy for the future rather than a guy that's going to immediately make an impact. This is definitely one for the future. Um, £200 goal bonus, 1.7 thousand uh, appearance fee, 4,200 a week currently. Uh, his contract length goes to 2017, so a long, long time, five-year contract. Um, this is one for the future, guys. I'm going to finalise this deal and hopefully that will be a plus and he will be signing for Liverpool very, very shortly. Well guys, the uh, friendly against Market Drayton went very well. Fabio Barini, Martin Kelly, uh, Asaidi, uh, Steven Gerrard must have come off the bench there to score and that's 4-0 going into the game. It's a nice morale booster for the, uh, the next game against Vitesse, which is the all-important uh, second leg of the qualifying stages of the Europa League. We need to win that game uh, at least 1-0 and that will force extra time but we do need to you know actually properly win that game like 2-0, 3-0 or something like that and get through to the next round. We really do need to win that. We're at home there is absolutely no excuse. Alright Liverpool versus Vitesse this is the match guys this is the match. The thing is that uh, my players are obviously the condition isn't particularly brilliant um, but I still expect to win nothing less than a win in this game will will, will you know satisfy me really won't satisfy me uh, instant result we're gonna go for that and we're go, gonna go for a big win we've got to go for a big win here and uh, click yes and we will see what happens when we come back guys I am far, far from happy. 87th minute equaliser from Vitesse has kicked us out of 
the Europa League. So, fantastic. What a great start to the season. What a great start to my Liverpool career. Um, we're out. <laughs> out of the Europa League already. It's mental. 87th minute goal. Are you kidding me? We could have forced extra time, but no. Ibarra scored for Vitesse. And I knew when that uh, when this game came up, when it was saying that I, w I would be facing against Vitesse, I knew it was going to be a particularly difficult game. But uh, there you go, guys. That's part and parcel of it. We can just concentrate on the league now and the cups in the league. The final friendly before the season starts, Liverpool 3, Newcastle 1. And really, I'm very, very surprised that we won that match. Um, Barini was played out of position. Sturridge was played out of position. There was a lot of people uh, played out of position. I really... I should have just left the friendlies empty and concentrated on the game against Vitesse. I didn't realise and it was my own fault and I messed it up. Now I think we're going to start the season actually on the back foot with some of the uh, fitness of the players. Got some bad news regarding Leandro Paredes guys. Um, unfortunately he got injured. Um, he has torn his hamstring as was in the middle of doing, you know, the, the thing. Now, the thing what I wish a football manager did was, you know, people, you know, they, they get injured all the time and they go through medicals and they're aware of these problems. However, you know, of course he, tell, he tore his hamstring, whatever it is. Um, I wish it would come up saying, you know what, this has happened, he's going to be out for so long. Um, do you still want to make this, uh, this transfer? And then you can say yes or no, and then on your head be it. I wish it would do that rather than just, cancelling the transfer totally. It's really, really annoying. Um, as you can see, this guy, £5 million. Um, we have put in a contract offer for him. I fully expect him to sign within the next few days. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get this guy. Uh, it, just not selling the guy at all. Just absolutely, you know, downright refusing to sell that guy. So, can't do much about that at the moment. But uh, maybe it's something I can catch up with next season. Uh, but we'll see. And there we have it, guys. We have signed Leon Goretzka. That will fill in that midfield area quite nicely, just while Lucas Leva is getting himself back on his feet, which will be relatively soon, actually. Um, but £5 million for a future player as well, that's uh, not, pr not bad. Not bad at all. All right, guys, as you can see, this is my team that's going to be lining up against QPR. I have... Uh, well, Gerard is injured, uh, so he's out. Barini, Coutinho, Sturridge, all across the middle there. Uh, Suarez, right up from on his own. Uh, Henderson and Allen, bringing up the midfield. Really, I don't like that pairing. I really don't like that pairing at all. We've got Jose Enrique, Kelly, Skirtle and Johnson all across the back there. Kelly is in because uh, Daniel Lago's actually on like 80-odd uh, condition, which is mad. You know, it's been... They've had long enough to recover in between the, the last game and this, so... I don't know. But uh, we'll go ahead and play this game. Well, you won't see me playing this game, you will see highlights of this. So, I'll be back when something interesting happens. It's half time guys, and it is nil nil. It's very, very disappointing. As you can see, ten shots, one on target. I'm I'm really, really disappointed by this. I was expecting more from my team. Now, Suarez has hit the post twice and just skimmed the bar, would you believe? But it's still nil nil. Alright guys, I've brought Fabio Barini off for Asaidi, and I've also brought Daniel Sturridge off for Raheem Sterling, hoping that a bit of pace down the sides will be able to uh, bring the difference. It's the 61st minute, still nil nil. I'm very, very unhappy with, uh, with my team's performance, especially Luis Suarez at the moment. He's really, really not doing very well at all. Absolutely unbelievable, guys. The, uh, the game ended nil nil. I had 23 shots, 10 on target. Nothing went in. Absolutely nothing at all. QPR had six shots, five on target. A very, very good ratio, I've got to say. But uh, I just could not. And they had one clear-cut chance. We had none. Out of ten shots on target, we had zero clear-cut chances. This needs starting out. We have an away game here against Reading. Now, Tottenham are actually facing off against QPR, the ones that uh, I were playing not so long back. And... Uh, well, I'm hoping for a bit better result this time. I've fiddled around with the people and I've, you know, I've told them to do not make the long shots. The long shots are what kill the, uh, the shots on target. So, where's the thing gone? There it is. Right. Team selection. I'm just going to go ahead and ask to pick. And hopefully, yeah, we're getting our, our fitness back. Unfortunately, Stevie G is looking a bit worse for wear. Uh, Lucas is back, finally. 
but uh, I don't want to push these guys, you know what I mean? I really don't want to push these guys. I don't know why it keeps putting Suarez on the left there, but I'm going to go with this. I'm going to go with this. I'm going to see what the the assistant thinks of this, and uh, we'll see. So, let's go ahead and play this game. My first goal of this season comes courtesy of none other than Daniel Sturridge. Lucas Lever involved with that lovely pass through to Sturridge, who then slices it straight into the right tiniest of gaps between the keeper and the post and it's 1-0. Half time it ended 1-0 to, uh, to me and I'm hoping for more of the same in the second half. I've made one substitution guys, I've took Steven Gerrard off who's looking a bit worse for, worse for wear and I've put in Coutinho and hopefully that will give me a, still a bit of creativity up front there um, and hopefully you know lead on to another goal. It was a slender win, but it was a win nonetheless. As you can see, Reading had more shots than we did. Uh, they had more possession than we did. Yet, we still came out on top. Martin Skirtle getting player of the match, which was fantastic. And 1-0 gives us three points, and a priceless three points it is as well. As you can see in the league, there we are now. Tenth, and uh, Tottenham, which is Shed's team, are up there in second place. Doing very well. 3-2 win over QPR away from home is not bad. Um, same with my win. You know didn't dominate the match or anything like that but got the result and that is the end of this episode guys next episode we will be doing a live match we'll be facing off against Sheds Tottenham um, I'm not sure actually let's just have a quick look see if we're at home or away we are away at Tottenham which is brilliant uh, so <laughs> Join me in the next episode, episode 3, for that game against Tottenham. Until next time, I've been the Toughman, and as always, stay safe.